Welcome to Cooking with Andrea. Today we're going to be making beef stroganoff. I'm excited. I have some mushrooms, some garlic, some onion, some uh, one pound of meat. I've got some olive oil, egg noodles, butter, sour cream, heavy cream, Dijon, and spices. We've got uh, parsley, lemon pepper, and thyme and broth. So I'm going to go ahead and get everything chopped up and then what we're going to do is we're going to come back but I'm going to get the noodles boiling so once we get back we'll be able to dive into cooking. Welcome back. Okay so I have the meat cut up. I got the onion and the mushroom and the garlic all cut up so we're going to start. Pan's nice and hot. I'm going to do a max sear. I'm going to put about a tablespoon uh, that was probably about a half a tablespoon of oil in and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna coat my meat with flour it's gonna give it this nice crusty I have three tablespoons of just plain all-purpose flour so what I'm gonna do is just get it all coated nice it's gonna give me a thickness too when my dish is all done it'll help okay so I just toss it in now I'm not going to put all this meat in at one time because I do not want to overcrowd my meat it's kind of like the concept when you're making a stew but this is wonderful ribeye this ribeye I got at Costco they sell it already pre-sliced really super thin and it's not very expensive with the bulk that I buy I will make three to four dinners out of it okay I do not want to overcrowd my pan because I'm not going to flip this until it's time to turn. And then we're good to go. And that's how we'll go ahead and lay it out. I'm going to go ahead and grab a plate so that you guys, I want to keep all my drippings, all my beautiful juicy bits. So I got on a max sear, nice and hot. Not going to turn it or anything. Just give it in enough room to uh, brown real fast. It's so nice and thin, it'll cook fast. And then remember, you're going to drop the meat back in when your dish is done. Pretty much or almost done and have it on the heat. But like I said, this is real thin. This is what you want for stroganoff, in my opinion. That's why a lot of people went to using hamburger because they didn't want the big chunks of steak. Like when you make, when you make sirloin tips and noodles, I believe that meat um, should be thick and it should be cubed. Stroganoff, I think it should be thin. And um, okay, now this meat looks good. We're gonna flip it just like that, get it all turned over. And then we'll be good to go here. Let it get all nice and brown. Um, but I think for the stroganoff, it should be thin. And it makes it just the taste so much better, in my opinion. But it's because I also make all those different things. I make stews. I make stroganoffs. I make uh, red wine beef pasta. So when you're doing that, I make bolognese. Uh, so, you know, when you're doing those kinds of pastas and things, you don't want all the pasta to taste the same. You don't use the same pasta. You don't use the same ingredients. Uh, you want it to all be a little different. Okay, now we're just waiting for this side to brown. I'm just going to pull the vegetable out. And I just wanted you to see, I went ahead and took the four large uh, mushrooms, the white button mushrooms I had, and I cut them up. I have to puree my onions. You guys do not have to puree your onions. Just cut your onions in small pieces. You don't want big pieces. But you know, I would be telling you a food lie or I wouldn't be eating this dish if I didn't do the onions this way because I can't do my onions that way. It's a texture thing for me. I took three large uh, cloves of garlic and I went ahead and diced them finely or chopped them finely. Okay, so we're good here. This is looking really good. Almost no meat or no red for my meat. So this just needs like a few seconds more. Then what we're going to do is dump this into the plate and we're going to do the second batch. And then what I'll do is we'll come back and then we'll do our veg. Welcome back. I'm going to stop my, my uh, new wave cooker. 
and I already scraped the bits off my pan already as I'm putting it in here. Mm, I'm getting every bit of my beautiful olive oil I put in there. And I'm taking off most of my bits right now. See the bits on the bottom of my spoon? That is goodness. Get that in there. Oh, somebody's going to get that little piece, and it's going to be fantastic. So see how the meat looks? It looks absolutely terrific. Texture is really good. You'll like it. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get... Um, oops, that was not cool. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Holy Toledo. We're going to get three tablespoons, or two and a half right now. We're going to add a little bit more in just a little bit if I need to. Let me get my pan on. I'm going to go down one higher and just do medium high and try not to make a mess. That might be impossible because I am a good mess maker. Holy Toledo. So first of all, what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to go to high. Because I actually have to puree my, my onion, mine is more liquidy than yours would be if you just chopped it up finely but remember do chop it up finely because to me it's very important um i think the taste is better i'm gonna go ahead and drop my mushrooms because my butter is just sizzling and there's about it's four really large it's about six ounces a lot of times people if you want to measure measure out eight or if you're going to use really big ones I don't need eight ounces of mushroom because then it'll take over my whole entire plate. So I'm just going to give these a toss real fast. Because my onions are so pureed, mine won't take long to cook. Not like if they were, you know, just chopped because mine are so fine. So I'm going to put the mushroom in first. And I'm not adding any salt and pepper yet or anything like that because I am going to use uh, my teaspoon of lemon pepper which gives you lemon and it gives you a good paper, uh, pepper taste. Also, I'm going to be using a uh, teaspoon and I'll put the exact measurements on the description because sometimes I get carried away and I just want to run fast. I actually think it's a half teaspoon but it might be a teaspoon. But I'll put all the directions on there for you. It's going to be thyme leaves, ground thyme leaves. Parsley I'm going to use after, just for my color, and I love parsley. I use parsley for everything. The reason I'm not adding any salt, though, also, is I'm going to use my little can of Campbell's. This is my little secret ingredient. So, whereas a lot of people will put Worcestershire, they'll put soy, which all those things are great. This is just how I made it up in my head, and one day I said, hey, I like this. I'm going to run with this one. And like I said, because I do make a lot of beef pasta dishes, they're all different though. None of them taste the same, to be honest, because uh, usually I'll use different um, onions or veggies or I'll use different seasonings and that's just the way I am. That's the only place where I'm a little creative in my opinion is in the kitchen. Sometimes uh, I think I'm a closed-minded uh, kind of person, but experimenting in the kitchen is awesome. Um, mushrooms are cooking beautifully and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop my onion because like I said man it is going to cool it down because mine is so liquidy but like I said I can't eat it if because of the onion texture and boy onion brings such a good flavor it really does so therefore I do not want to skimp on any of that flavor for me and my family. Um, so I learned to, you know, puree it. It's so funny because I always make Mexican food and I'm always blending the chili, the onion, a tomatillo, tomatoes. And I says, hey, do this with everything and you'll be fine. And now I'm going to pop my heat up to max because that on onion did drop my heat. But like if you were to put your onion in there, Yours would not have dropped like mine did. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get this all nice and um, toasted and beautifully, and we're gonna take this liquid out of my pan and we'll be back. 
Okay, welcome back. Uh, mushrooms and onions are done cooking. Like I said, might take a few minutes more because mine are pureed, so I have a lot of liquid in my onion. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put three cloves of garlic in with that beautiful butter and the mushrooms. Mushrooms are all nice and uh, they're golden. My onions won't get as golden because mine are pureed. If you don't puree yours, yours will be nice and golden. But it doesn't matter. I got the onion flavor, so that's the flavor that I need because that's what's gonna make this dish. Back in the day, cooking was much more simple. Not as many seasoning, spices, things like that. So you had to make do with what you had. Oh, this garlic smells absolutely wonderful. Mushrooms are nice and uh, golden. Mm. I love when the mushrooms are golden. It makes the texture of the mushrooms so much better. So we're just gonna let this cook for just a second. Let this garlic bloom. There's no way I want this garlic to burn. Uh, I do not like burnt garlic, so I'm not letting it burn. I always say not on my watch. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this whole can. A lot of people go, oh, you need to add water. I'm not adding water. This is where I'm going to get all my flavor. This is where all the bits are going to be beautiful on the bottom. These mushrooms are gorgeous. So here we go. Mm. Now what I'm going to do is take and stir... Get all those beautiful bits off. I'm gonna let this cook for just a minute. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and add some seasoning. Okay, I've got my pan on high. That's what I want it on. And I have my noodles over here. They're already cooked. My egg, my large egg noodles, or white egg noodles, I should say. I have a three-fourths cup of heavy cream and I have a half a cup of sour cream. Okay, I'm getting a little boil here, which is beautiful. Let's get everything incorporated. Mm -mm. Smells delicioso. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put my uh, teaspoon of lemon pepper in. I just want this to be my flavoring agent. Now, after I've I've got everything uh, composed, then what I'll do is go back and taste it. And if it needs salt and pepper, I'll add it at the, that time. So I'm going to do a half a teaspoon of the ground thyme leaves. Mm, smells so fragrant. Okay, I'm just going to let this cook for a minute. And then what we're going to do is add our Dijon mustard. We're going to do a half a tablespoon of Dijon mustard. So I'm just gonna go like that. Oh, maybe I better not. Uh, you know, we're not into making two messes today. We already did one with our butter, threw it right on the counter. Well, good thing I bleached my counters. My family's not afraid to eat off of them. Uh, I'm a bleach freak. Okay, we're gonna put a nice heaping teaspoon of Dijon. It's going to come in and give it some flavor, which, oh, I just love. Mm. Smells delicious. Looks delicious. Oh gosh, guess what I found in my pot? A little bit of a big onion. Oh no, you can't. I can't have that. <laughs> I'm crazy when it comes to onion. I do not like uh, bigger chunks of onion. And uh, guess what? I did find that piece of onion that big everybody be like that's not even a speck of onion and you know what i was thinking it's probably not even onion it's probably a piece of garlic i missed so here i am you guys know i can't tell a, a, a an onion food lie okay let's get all our dijon let's go ahead and scrape it out and get everything in there okay we're good We're building flavors right now, you guys, building flavors, which is great. Okay, let's let this cook for a minute. Mm. Holy moly. Oh, guess what? Talking about flavors, we've got more flavors with that meat. That, mean, that meat has ground goodness. Okay, so one thing I don't do is measure my uh, parsley. Parsley is a you thing. 
If you like want to use parsley, use parsley. If you don't want to use it, don't. But I'll tell you something. If you do want to measure, I always start out with a um, a tablespoon myself personally because I do like parsley. Right in front of my face, probably. Uh, I was looking for my other set of measuring, but um, I don't see what I did with it. It's probably stuck in my drawer somewhere. I have like four sets running around. So what I do is I would add, take and just add some. You're adding four flavor while it's cooking and color. That's what I always do. But do as much as you want or don't do any at all or just garnish after the fact. Now, I will garnish after the fact because I am a huge parsley fan. Just like I'm a huge celery salt fan. Okay, so now we've got this. I'm going to turn my heat down uh, just to high. And I'm going to put my heavy cream in. And that, like I said, was three-fourths cup. You know, a heavy cream, I don't use it all the time. I use it and buy it when I'm making macaroni and cheese that week, when I'm making dishes like this this week, or I'm making something. Or I'll base my cooking around it because heavy cream is not something everybody uses. I never used to use it until years ago. Um, I would just use milk. But I actually like the way it makes my macaroni and cheese, my sauces um, look and how they taste i think it makes them more velvety uh with that heavy cream and butter especially i mean because you can see the sauce is glistening it's absolutely gorgeous so now i have that i'm going to pour my meat back in and then i'm going to do my sour cream last i'm going to take every ounce of goodness i don't even care if my olive oil comes onto the plate let it come we want all this goodness from the meat all this umptiousness, you know, um, and it's a good hearty meal too. You got the ribeye once, like I said, you, you know, if you separate that ribeye, it's not expensive at all. I paid like $26 for the whole pack. I got four, no, I got five pounds of it. So it was a really good deal at Costco. And, um, so I, I had me and my husband, we just separated it. So this is a dinner and we have three other dinners and uh so it's not expensive at all my heavy cream because i use it for everything um and i do um buy i think i did buy sometimes i'll buy off brands or i'll buy oh i did buy my winco brand of heavy cream so it was a lot cheaper than the other one um and then my noodles were nothing noodles are nothing mushrooms didn't cost me anything as well i mean that was just so cheap have my seasonings so the dinner is relatively inexpensive just remember when you're buying make sure you buy for the week kind of think out the meals and then you don't incur any extra cost but you get that little extra flavor or you don't run out of milk sooner than later sometimes I used to do that because I'd make dishes and run out of milk <laughs> okay so we're doing really good it's heated real well I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to add a little bit of uh, my liquid to my sour cream because I do not want to curdle my sour cream. And if you do this and mix it in, it won't curdle it. It's so funny. This used to freak me out so bad when I first started doing this because I was like, oh my gosh, it's going to curdle. I heard all these stories about curdling. And then I learned this trick. I'm going to add just a little bit more so that it's incorporated better. Oh, my goodness. And now when I get it in there, it won't curdle everything. Okay, so guess what? We're going to get to putting our sour cream in. And then we're going to get to mixing. And I'm going to get my little spatula. And we're just going to incorporate it all. Look at the color. It is absolutely gorgeous absolutely gorgeous everything is cooked everything is wonderful okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this off my heat for a minute and I'm gonna get my spatula 
because I want to dig out all that sour cream because that's the liquid for my dish and my family loves sour cream this is their thing they are so easy to please when it comes to uh, sour cream oh, they'll just eat sour cream and chips they're that easy okay Let me go ahead and I'm gonna get this mixed get this back up here okay so this is where we need to take a taste though and see if all our seasonings are there now I'm gonna put this I'm gonna put it back on high for a minute get everything incorporated and warmed up more I am actually a person who likes my food very hot mm. you are gonna be so happy this is a very good dish, very, very simple. So let's get this thing uh, got plated up because it is fantastic and it is done. And it's warm enough, no need for heat. Okay, just gonna uh, take and warm my noodle real fast here. And get it on my plate. Let's go with this one. And this is going to be our wonderful, oh, looks fantastic. Mm. And I like mine uh, a little bit on the liquid side because if I don't have enough liquid, uh, the noodles will dry out and I will not be eating my food. I do not like dry food. I am a saucy kind of girl or a gravy girl, whatever you want to call it. It has to have some goodness. So, let me just get another little scoop right here. Mm, you're going to like the cut of meat, too. The cut of meat is excellent. Look for ribeye on sale. Get your ribeye, cut it up at home. If I did not have a good deal at Costco, I would have cut my own ribeye up. And I have a lot of parsley in mine. So, I did not want to over parsley mine, but let's just take one more bite just to try everything together. Mmm. Mmm. Tastes fantastic. You could taste the mushroom, mm, the garlic, you can taste the onion. It is absolutely fabulous. I want you to try this. It's an inexpensive dish for you and your family if you like this kind of stuff. If you actually are a vegetarian, just don't add the meat. Add, do the sauce component with the veg and you'll be fine. But I want to thank you for um, watching and coming in and supporting me every week. I want to say thank you. And if you like the content, if you would please like, share, and subscribe, I'd be most grateful. Thank you.